this is like going in the video. I think it is actually. Oh yeah, this is this will be the intro. You're watching Uncut Angling, which is made possible by Travel Manitoba, Alumacraft Boats, Yamaha Outboards, Shimano Reels, G Loomis Rods, Fraybill Gear, Plano Tackle Storage, Humbert Electronics, and Minkota Shoaling Motors. This episode is presented by Travel Manitoba and filmed in Manitoba's northern region. Well folks, this is it. About to embark on the biggest road trip in uncut angling history. You make sure you have the proper tire pressure, especially when traveling on gravel roads. Up to Reindeer Lake, it'll be 16 hours on pavement, maybe 15 and then two hours of gravel. We're on the road. The time is 3.25 in the afternoon, eight hours behind when we wanted to leave. Where are we going? All the way up, as far as you can go in Manitoba. Well, I don't know what highway number it is, but once you go far enough north of Manitoba, you got the choice. You can go northeast to Gillum, or you can go northwest to Lynn Lake. And we are going to Lynn Lake and beyond to Reindeer Lake. To deliver some fishing rods, these are part of the prizes that Aaron and Manny won in 39 hours. How many rods? Uh, I think we won 96 and Shimano bumped it up to allow for the extra students at this school. I think there's gonna be about 114, 115 kids that we're gonna deliver these rods to on Monday morning. Right now it's Saturday night. So we've got a bit of a time frame buffer here. Hopefully we can make the unknown boat drive that's 65 miles across open ocean. And we've got a wind forecast of, I think 30 gusting to 40 miles per hour winds. So gusting to 50, 60 kilometers. It's gonna be interesting. The main goal is to deliver the rods. After that, some fishing may occur. Spawning lake trout, it should be prime time. What do you want for rock stars? You're gonna want them later. No. Huh? No. You quit? Any flavor. Oh. The gateway to the north. Highway number six. We made it. We are at Woodlands. Woodlands. Ooh, that was Synchronized. That was nice. This is a top ice cream stop for Uncut Egg League for... Uh... Used to be called Studler's Shell, and now apparently it's called CCL Woodlands, but amazing ice cream here. They got a bit of grocery, they got fuel, they got all your basic essentials. But did I say ice cream ready? Maybe. There's a little secret stash here. I don't leave home without a supply of waffle cones. That way when you stop at these side parlors, they got those cardboard cones. You can upgrade. Oh, there goes everything in my wallet. How many do you want, Jay? Three, four? Just one. Just one? Whew, having a garage sale here. We got credit cards. You wanna show some of those numbers to the viewers at home? What flavor are you thinking? Swirl, twist, the only flavor. 50% white, 50% black. Multicultural ice cream. Hello. Do you guys have the ice cream maker on still? It's like only chocolate works. What? No twist? Oh, oh, oh. Well, chocolate's oh. better than vanilla, but how could there be no twist? This might be a situation. We won't make too big of a stink. Chocolate's good. Chocolate's fine. Get a close-up, Jay, as it's going in. This is key for our video. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Mm. You make that look gross. It was so good. There you go. Thank you so much. So much good footage in there, eh? And now we're off. We got uh, eight hours to our next big stop. That'll be Thompson. Well, it's 2 a.m. in Thompson, Manitoba. So many jerry cans. We just picked up another jerry can from our buddy Trent Lays, so now we've got, I think, eight jerry cans. Because when you get up this far, gas is a limited resource. And we're gonna be traveling through the night to Lynn Lake, which there may be gas at once we get there at eight in the morning or something. This boat, this is the cleanest you'll see it on this trip. This is it. It's looking pretty good. Soon it will get. I think mucked up would be a fitting term for what's about to happen. Are you staying out here or coming in? I'm gonna come film some experience. I'm just picturing that figure eight music where you're walking in. Boom, 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 boom. Why Eagle Ryan? Oh my goodness. Morning. Oh, that's the best price I've ever seen. Okay, thanks man, have a good night. McDonald's? I would like a hundred chicken McNuggets. Well, the one thing we failed to do a little more of for this trip was uh, planning, which involves Google Maps, form reading, just general research, so. Begging people for spots. Begging people, so if you, well, yeah. It's too late. It's too late now, yeah. But we have iPads. Here we go. There is Canada. You can see Grandier Lake from outer space. There's Winnipeg. 
We were up in Thompson right there right now. And let's get a little closer. On reindeer, it's probably, I would say, 80% in Saskatchewan, 20% Manitoba. But the good... The big fish. The good stuff, the biggest of the biggest, live in Manitoba for whatever reason. That's the focus. This is our destination. This is the goal. That's brochet. Like a strip reef like that, is that like four miles long? Uh, you could do the, the distance stuff. Don't you have a gauge on the bottom right? 500 meters. That's not insane. That's Half big. a kilometer? That's, yeah, that's big. I like the look of this more because there's actually like comes to a you, point. You know what he means by the, the cobblestone stuff, right? Can you picture spots like that? Our buddy Trent, who we just had uh, supper with, suggested the cobble is good for spawning, not as much as the jagged stuff. Are you interested in casting a little bit for grayling? No, not at all. Shout out to our other cameraman who loves McDonald's but couldn't be here today, Brett Gardner. 3 a.m. We're going to be at Lynn Lake at uh, 8 or 9 in the morning. 7.30 a.m. We are in Lynn Lake, Manitoba, which is kind of the end of the road, but the road goes just a little bit further. I'm getting inside my sleeping bag because I just drove all night from Thompson, Manitoba, and I earned myself a nap until the gas station opens. I don't have much to say. I was just grabbing some really quality B-roll. It's noon. We just slept in the parking lot. I felt better. Aaron, how do you feel? I feel great, I think. Welcome to the sport fishing capital of Manitoba. This is your last opportunity to get gas before you go into the real unknowns beyond to the west. To the end of the road. Oh yeah, that's great. Start driving? Yeah. Nothing can stop me. All the way up. Not even common sense. Boys better not go to reindeer. Listening to all those um, podcasts on the way here and they kept talking about what a fool does. <laughs> I kept thinking, oh my goodness. <laughs> How a fool knows better but still does it. And I was thinking that's us on this trip. I can stop if you want the donuts. Yes, that is the airstrip right there. It's fenced off. So you huh. don't wander in there when you go get the donuts. I've got a treat for you. Yes. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll give you hints. Or you ask questions. Okay. Is it round? Yes. Mmm. Glazed. I'm not eating that one. It's touched your dirty hands. I just went to the effort of washing my hands. Get away from me. Get away from me. Flip the camera around. Shove it down your greasy throat. It was good. It's a good donut. Is it good? Is it fresh? Yeah. I might start with two just to get me in the mood. Eat them all. It is two degrees. That is, uh, it's almost freezing. 38 Fahrenheit for you American folks. So this is the road. It's getting worse. Not only is this a grayling river, but there's the grayling spot right there. Yeah, there'd be a couple grayling there. Oh, that'd be so awesome to fish for them, Jay. No! Don't film me right now. I don't want anyone to see me like this. It's kind of disgusting. We have so much good food, healthy food. We got yogurt, mm -hmm. we got eggs. Mm -hmm. Fruit cups. Oh, why didn't you pass me an egg? I could have eaten that. Oh boy. Reindeer Lake, Manitoba. Oh, okay. This might be the end. There's a river up here. It might be another Grayling River, Jay. This might be the end of the trip, guys. I'm just going to show you. That's a washout. That's what you call it. Ooh, that's what you call a washout. Super scary. Well, let's get some cool angles. I don't know if we're going to get there, Jay. I don't know if we have enough donuts for the journey. Maybe I'll get you to hop out at a couple of these spots. I probably won't use the footage, but <laughs> it's good to have anyways. Well, here I am, half naked in the vehicle. Yeah, we're, we're not lost yet, but we're gonna head out on the lake and then we'll be lost. Did they say numbers on the waves? Six, seven footers? Really? Huh. Uh, brochet? <laughs> yeah, eventually, maybe not right now. How long does that take? And if it's windy, three days? Two days. You know, the road didn't treat us as bad as we expected. No, things are clean, a lot of rain. Should I put on clean underwear for good luck? Or is that bad luck? We are getting there. We have a lot of stuff. We haven't even thrown in the jerry cans, generator, propane yet. And this is how full the boat is already. All right. Anytime. Anytime. It is Sunday, September 11th. You're probably seeing this about a week after that. Jay and I have just arrived at massive, huge Reindeer Lake. We looked on the map at Northern Manitoba 
and we found the most northern, remote, secluded point that we could get to with a combination of truck and boat to deliver over a hundred Shimano rod and reel combos. These are the rod and reel combos that Manny and I won during the first segment of 39 hours. The Conrads have already given away all their combos. This is our opportunity to deliver these to kids. I think the kids have been in school for three or four days. So there's gonna be an interesting Monday afternoon for them. We're gonna have three classroom sessions with grade one to threes, four to sixes, and seven to nines as we hand out these rods. Jay and I are gonna have a lot on our hands as we're gonna be spooling up with line all these Shimano rod and reel combos. Oh! Woo! We haven't done this before, but we're gonna keep the travel cover on the nose of the boat. We got enough stuff, I think. For probably two or three weeks. Depends how air needs. I'm focused on something called... Water's 54, that's kind of warm, isn't it? 54 is, yeah. Yeah? Do we want high 40s? No. 52 is the magic number, Tim Matheson really? says. Yeah. What kind of water temperatures are we talking about that the fish are moving up in general? Usually 52 is triggering the, the smaller fish to spawn. Yeah. And by the time it gets to 51 or 50, that's when the big fish are interested in the spawning beds. So this is eggs and yogurt. We'll see if it survives. 18 eggs. How does that math even work? That is nine eggs per person per day. No. Wish us luck. Anything you want to say? I was going to say, you'll notice we're definitely wearing life jackets. We should probably have survival suits on for a trip of this nature, but we don't. I notice your vents are open on your, on your suit there, Miner. Yeah. Uh, kill cord, so important. That way if something does happen, if we hit a rock or anyone gets launched out of the boat, that engine stops immediately. You need to wear that at all times. Of course, during crazy late fall conditions like this, but I wear this every single time in the boat and you should too. Otherwise your boat becomes a projectile goes and hits something else, goes far away from you when you hit the water. Now the boat's gonna stop so fast. You can swim back to the boat or your passenger can just turn around, pick you up. Otherwise the boat loses control. Might throw the passenger out as well. Bang! We've been driving for I think, what, 40 minutes, 45 minutes? And uh, we're starting to get into the bigger water. Took a couple of waves to the face. Welcome to Reindeer Lake. I don't think we're gonna make the whole trip tonight. We'll see if we can make it, I don't know, 20 or 30 miles. Find an island to sleep on. We'll go the rest of the way tomorrow morning. That's our final destination. That is where we started. So we're almost halfway, not too bad. Didn't even get too wet. And we're thinking we're gonna sleep in this area. So we hit the shore here and we are gonna unload, yeah, 126, 128, I'm not sure exactly how many rods. Out of the boat, jerry cans, out of the boat. Supper time. Thank you, Ken Cudmore. These are moose steaks. They're not from Cabela's, but the packaging is from Cabela's. Look at that. Oh, we're just gonna crush that along with, Jay insists that we need one package each, which I thought one of these packages was for a family. This is the most cooking I think I've ever done on an uncut angling filming trip. Oh, that is real cheese fragments. A little bit of margin. Oh, we need milk. Mar we'll just do extra margin. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, that's yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Oh yeah, no, that's no more than, okay, yeah. That's good. This is uh, what we call the appetizer. Moose. I don't know how this is gonna work, pan frying steaks. This is a big step up for normal uncut angling meals. Aaron has really splurged on the budget. We're gonna indulge some delicious organic KD. And how are your first bites, sir? Delectable. Mm. It's uh, 2 a.m. and we just finished supper. And then we're gonna nap for a couple hours and uh, get back on the crazy train. Why'd you say it's 2 a.m.? To make it sound hardcore? Yeah. It's uh, 9.30. We're about to get a nice early bedtime in here. I'm going to finish putting this beautiful tarp on. Jay's underneath, <clears throat> right there. Hi! 
this tarp's knock up buttons. It's got these plastic J hooks, which hook on super nice. It's all the way tarped up already there. Just gonna finish tarping this corner, and then I'm gonna tarp that corner, and then I'm gonna crawl underneath. And here we are, I got the top bunk tonight. Hi guys. Jay's on the casting deck. Thank you, Lumicraft, for making a giant casting deck for Jay's big body up there. Thank you. And his twin air mattress. Hotel Lumicraft. And down on the base level here, there's the rest of, you know, everything else going on. We got a lot of space. We could have easily done a invite a co-host on this trip. Yeah, no, I got a good, it kind of touches my face when I'm sleeping, but. And good night. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, it's just magnificent. Lots of clouds? No, like very few clouds. Got to load all those goodies back in the boat. Yeah, I can hear the wind in the distance, definitely. Ain't it good to be alive? Good to be alive. Oh, morning, people at home. We're doing our morning stretches here on Reindeer Lake. Woo. And bring in the clap. This is how we can eat all that junk food and stay in such great fishing shape. Bring on the donuts. Get you ready for a donut? Nope. Basically the way we got here yesterday is we just punched in a bunch of generic waypoints. I guess basically like breadcrumbs to follow when we go across the lake. We threw in some skull and crossbones in a couple places here where we could see visible reefs on Google Maps. Now we're going out to the ocean. Like the big water, we haven't even seen it yet. Once again, kill cord, so important. Slip it over your wrist, tighten her down. Away we go. We're in the middle of the ocean right now. You gotta wear your life jacket. You gotta, there's just no option. I'm not sure if you can see that. We're in, oh, I don't know, you can see that rock pretty good. A foot of water? Not a good shortcut through here. Yeah. These northern lakes, they're uncharted, you gotta be careful. This is the north end of Reindeer. Look at the, all that amazing water. The reserves right here that we're headed to, Brochet. Uh, the main inflow, the Cochrane River, comes in right here. 10, 12 miles to go. Shoot up in there. See all the kids this afternoon and then time for Jay and Aaron to start doing some Jay and Aaron time. That means 50 pound lake trout. Yeah. And 16 inch grayling. Me no, no grayling. Oh! Looking good. Hi, Brochet. They have a school bus. That's pretty impressive. So say it's right beside the church. Do you see a church somewhere? I bet you it's that blue building. We're just about to hit shore for the first time in Brochet. That building presumably is the school. We don't know for sure, but looks promising. We made it. Throw the team on your back and head up the hill. Yeah. Okay. We did a video series. It was called 39 Hours. Basically, we fished for 39 hours in a row for all different species, including all the species you guys mentioned that live here on Reindeer Lake, as well as all sorts of other fish that live all across Manitoba and all across provinces nearby. And the prizes that we won from this company called Shimano was rod and reel combos that we could pass along to whoever we want. So we looked on a map and we wanted to go as far away as we could by truck and boat. And that is where we ended up today. And we brought each of you guys a fishing rod and reel. Oh my God. <laughs> I it. So what we're gonna try and do as a group over the next 20 minutes or so is we're gonna try and put line on these rods and reels. Do you guys think we can do that? You know how? That is a big help. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hand you guys each a rod and reel. Any bites? Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Already putting those rods to good use, apparently. Very good. 
now it's time for Aaron and Jay to unleash fury on Reindeer Lake. Well, gross again. They're small, but they're where they're supposed to be, up shallow. Yeah. Ooh, Alex, is there. that a pike or a trout? That's a trout, that's a big trout. First good trout of the day hooked here. Sharking around. I mean, he looks big compared to what we've been catching, but he's not a giant. That's about as dirty of a net job as you can get right there. One-handed, not extended net. And look at what we got. Our first adult looking trout. Still a lot of improvements that can be made here. But look at that thing. Look at those orange fins. I'm gonna call that 31, 32 inches. There it goes. <laughs> there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Gold half wave spoon. As you know, it's a favorite spoon of mine, but you could probably be throwing any spoon, any crankbait. We've had fish. Jay's using a swim bait. I put on a squad minnow, which is a jackal jerk bait. I put on a bigger swim bait than Jay's swim bait, and I've been throwing a spoon. I've been catching on everything. So when you come across these fish that are stacked up on some higher percentage areas, they're eating everything. 11 foot cabbage. Really? Feel lucky? Yeah. Like this is super late to be cabbage fishing this far north. It looks really green. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. First cast. Yeah? Yep. Net? Uh, maybe. If he's not in the cabbage, he's big. <sighs> oh, did he get off? Oh, never mind. Wow, is he ever dark? That talon uh, isn't wanting to dig. Yeah, it, it's like right at its limit on its tippy toes in this depth of water. These pike probably never get fished. They definitely seem eager, wow. That thing's like chartreuse. Are you seeing this? Well, this is whatever. I'm good to go. Moving on? Yeah. I'd rather fish trout or we could cook supper already. Oh, that's a little better maybe. Can we do something? I don't know. It's gotta be big, no? I think so. That's a big fish, yeah. Big? Yeah. Really big? Yeah. We just took a break from lake trout fishing because we found a weed bed. And I think we're hooked up with our first big pike of the trip. That's a good one. Gobbled my Shadzilla swim bait. Oh boy. Gotta watch over that talon. And put it up. Yeah, put it up. Feel rubbing? Yeah. Oh, great. It might be in the talon. So I'll put it back down? I don't know. It's definitely in the talon. What do you want me to do? Put it down. Further? Ah! Oh. Put it down more, up. I don't know, it's, this is not good. I'd be surprised it's still on there. There he is, he's out here. Where is he? He's right there. Come on. Oh, oh my god. That goodness. was so dirty. So dirty. That is a monster. That's a big pike. That's probably 45, I don't know. Maybe I'll slide the net up to the front. Okay. We just given up on that weed bed. Aaron pulled the chilling water. Last cast. How typical. This thing was gone. Just inhaled. Chadzilla Jr. there. Using it for trout and for pike. It's doing the trick. All right, throw on the tape. Just over 45. Wow. 45 and a half. That right there is a Manitoba monster pike. We couldn't resist hitting up this cabbage bed we found, so. 45, almost 45 and a half inch pike. I haven't caught a pike that big. So I was 13 years old, so pretty stoked about that one. Good job, buddy. We hadn't caught a pike over 30 inches. 
packed up to leave the spot and then 45 and a half inch are pretty awesome. We're right now it is so windy we're pretty much just fishing the spots we can fish trying to get shelter wherever we can and found a weed bed in 10 feet of water probably caught a dozen pike and that was the big one so day two sleeping in the boat and uh we're setting up camp we're having chili and beef ravioli that's like a week worth of ravioli that's basically all you need to bring with Is it ever nice out here? Yeah. We are on it. This is nice and cobbly. We're on them. And this is just the middle of nowhere on this spot. Yeah. On the map, this is that reef that looks like it goes for like a mile. So this one might be better suited for flatlining T60s in 15 feet of water. Wow, is there a lot of fish on this spot. And another one. That's definitely pretty. Still looking for a big one. But a uh, big one looking like that would be pretty wild. Basically every cast action. We probably started through 40 trout already. Finally got a bit of a kicker. It's a nice fat one, probably 34, 35, I don't know. Those orange fins, that's an indicative sign of spawn. All right, let's see what we got. 35, that's a master right there. Well, we're gonna get him right back in because even though a 35 is huge, there's a lot of 40 inches in this lake. So that's the goal. Oh, love it. Shallow water, we're only in like, I uh, one probably came out at eight feet of water. It's fun, casting swim baits, casting spoons. They're angry. Okay, we're gonna do a uh, something bigger troll. Yeah. How far are you going? I'm at 103. Are you gonna try to stay a little deeper? Or what are you thinking? 15 to 20? Yeah. Or deeper than that? No, I think 15 to 20. Mm, it's only drag, but I don't think he's big. We're doubled up on the crankbait pass. Fins don't look small. Is it a pike? <laughs> it might be a pike. No Come way. Come on. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Get them side by side. We just got double 36 inch pike. Fatties. On our trout cranks. That's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. This is the, 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 the bycatch yep. in between trout here. Not too bad. Okay. Nice. Wow, it was fat. Hey, better than a tiny trout. Oh. Jay's hooked up. Big fish. Trolling flat fish. Big head shakes. Really big head shakes. Do you want me to do anything with the motor? Nothing. I'm going to try to get to the nose. Oh. Those head shakes were huge. I thought I lost it a couple times. You're good sideways like this? Yeah. Oh, this fish has me nervous. This is a heavy fish. It's a big fish. Trolling deep around the perimeter with it. Jay's using a flat fish. I was using a 10 inch Jake. Oh, it's rolling like crazy. This fish has me nervous. What are you going to do about netting it, Jay? Oh, it's huge. Big orange fins. Oh, oh, I'll net him. Big good trout. And oh, that is a big orange beauty right there. Well done. Man, that fought so hard. Well, it seems like we are a little bit ahead of the spawn and the biggest fish aren't right on the top yet, but this fish we caught in probably 15 feet of water, throwing a flatfish, a staple for big Lakers. But look at the fins on this fish. Oh, oh look at that. Look at those orange fins. Things amazing. Yeah, amazing. Tall, perky dorsal, perfect shape. Man, just how can you not love fall trout? Quick measurement. 39 and a half. 39 and a half inch orange rocket. Nice, look at that. And it's happening. First half day of good weather and trout are snapping. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats.